This happened nearly eight years ago, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. So I was walking with my mother around 10pm. It was a summer's evening and we were trying to get some air as it was a scorching hot day and the house was really hot too. I decided to walk her down the road around the roadblock to get onto a nice path. This was along a normally busy road, however it was quiet at the time. I crossed with her to the other side of the road where the roadblock was. To the side of some cement barriers ahead was a small forest-like area in front of a large property, not belonging to the owners. Mind you, it was pitch black and there was only a street light about 100 feet away. We cross over and I hear a really odd sound. Red flags went off and I felt my heart sink deep into my chest. Uh, mum, did you hear that? She didn't say anything, but I saw the worry and confusion in her eyes. She then said, Turn around, we're going back. What we heard was a deep growl, something short but fierce. It continued a couple of times and we quickly turned around. I started running, but she couldn't run due to health issues. I turned around after a short sprint and saw, I kid you not... Large black figure on all fours creep up from behind the barrier we were at a few seconds ago. I started sweating really bad and almost shit myself. Mum, what the hell was that? You've got to run, please. She started to speed walk and I watched as the figure got up on two legs and jumped into the forest. This thing looked like a man in some sort of gorilla suit. We booked at home and decided to just open the windows for fresh air that night. We never came across anything like that in our area again. But, deeper into the mountain area of the city, there was an ape man reportedly exposing himself to women who would run on the trail. I don't know if this is really a man that's going around harassing people, or if it's really some sort of creature. Either way though, it's terrifying. This is a real experience that I had during missionary service in Los Angeles, California, back in 2010. I feel like a lot of LDS missionaries have similar experiences, but I don't hear them often. Mostly because the people I know don't really like to talk about them. I know this is a little long, but it was consecutive days that things happened. Sorry about that. I had been a missionary living in LA for about 6-8 to eight months at the time these experiences occurred. And to this day, I haven't been able to come up with logical explanations for what happened. So, to paint the picture a little better, I'll give you a little bit of context. As a missionary, you get called to serve in an area assigned to you by the church leaders, and it can be anywhere in the world. My particular calling was in LA, and I was to work mainly in the Spanish-speaking communities. You live and work with a partner, or your companion... You serve and visit families and individuals in your assigned area. During this time, I was assigned to an area which is just west of downtown LA, near Koreatown. While you are a missionary, you live in housing paid for by the church, so you don't get to choose your apartment or area in which you live. At the time, my companion and I were in a little one-bedroom apartment in a small complex. We had just moved out of our old apartment and into this new complex. As missionaries, you don't really spend too much time in your apartment since you're out in appointments with people that you're teaching and visiting for pretty much the whole day until about 9 or 9.30 at night. Our apartment was tucked into a corner with another apartment and the neighboring family always had their door open. I noticed as we were moving stuff in that they had a lot, and I mean a lot, of porcelain statues of the Virgin Mary. Some had candles around them and others were placed in makeshift altars. After spending a lot of time with many different Hispanic families from all over Central and South America, this was something that I was accustomed to seeing. It's very common in the Hispanic culture, and many believe that these figurines and altars will help make their house more holy and keep out any bad spirits and things. Although, thinking back on it, they had way more than any other house that I had ever visited, and that was just what was able to be seen in the living room when the front door was open. 
The first night we slept in the apartment, things seemed pretty normal. I don't really sleep well. Pretty sure I have a mild case of insomnia, in fact. It takes me a while to fall asleep, and when I do, I'm never asleep for very long. I always seem to wake up at around 2 or 3 in the morning, no matter how tired I am. And this night was no different. I woke up and remember that I was pretty cold, but we had a window unit that we turned on before bed, so I attributed it to that. I like to sleep in the cold anyway, so I can get a huge blanket and wrap up. The bedroom was a decent sized bedroom. There were two twin beds, almost like a dorm room, and then two small dressers. The beds were underneath a window that was higher up and about half the length of the wall. They faced the closet, which was basically these two huge mirror slider doors that went from the door to the ceiling and went the length of the wall. These closet doors were pretty sturdy and took a little bit of effort to open. The next day we got up, made breakfast and headed out for the day. This day started the first string of weird coincidences that ultimately led to more. We began to visit a young family that lived with their mum in an old apartment complex. The family consisted of a single mum, her son, probably in his mid-twenties, her daughter, and her daughter's husband and their baby daughter. We started chatting and engaging in normal small talk, and then randomly, the son said, Hey, did I ever show you guys that picture on my phone that I found? We told him no, and then he proceeded to tell us this story about a picture he had taken of his baby niece in a high chair in the kitchen. He told us that he was just scrolling through his pictures on his phone a couple of days earlier, when he came across the picture of his niece and noticed something in the corner of the picture that he hadn't seen when he took the photo. He said that he'd been feeling uneasy in the house and that he kept hearing weird things, but never really knew for sure what was going on, so he never really thought much about it. When he was looking at the picture he noticed there was a figure of a girl standing in the corner of the kitchen and he said it was a ghost that he thinks had been haunting the whole family for the past couple of months. I was pretty skeptical and asked if he still had the picture and he eagerly pulled it up and handed me the phone. This was the first time in my life that I had ever seen a picture like this. She was standing there behind the niece in the high chair just looking at the camera. She was young maybe in her teens with jet black hair to her shoulders. She had what looked like a satchel over her shoulder and her eyes were just black. I mean, completely black. She was wearing a modest white dress with sleeves to her elbows and her mouth was barely open as if she was about to speak or something. And the weirdest part of all was that she was completely transparent. It was really weird. He told us stories of the things that had been happening in the house. There were only two bedrooms in the little apartment, so he shared a room with his sister and brother-in-law and their daughter. He recounted that at night, he would feel the room get cold and he would wake up and feel a weight on his chest that made it hard to breathe. As soon as the weight was lifted, he would look around the room and nobody else would be awake, but he knew that someone was watching him. One night in particular... Brother-in-law woke up and felt that there was someone in the room with them. He sat up and saw a shadow leaning over the baby's crib and when he tried to get up and get to the bed of the baby, he instantly became paralyzed and couldn't move to go get it. Well, we got home around 9 o'clock that night. I woke up at 1.30 in the morning and I was freezing cold. We didn't even turn our window unit on before bed that night because we had left our window open while we were gone. After about five minutes, I get the feeling that I wasn't the only one awake and figured that my companion had woken up and rolled over since it was so cold in our room. I looked over to see and he was still asleep and hadn't moved. I rolled over again and closed my eyes. I start to doze off and then had weird dreams about that picture and the ghost girl. I remember I kept half waking up and remember feeling like people were watching me sleep. The next day was pretty normal, except for dinner. As a missionary, you usually try to eat dinner with people who are members of your congregation that you attend. That way you can spend time with the members and get to know them and serve them and their families. And sometimes they have friends or family that want to know more about our church than they refer you to. Plus, it's always nice to get a home-cooked meal from someone else. This particular night, we were eating dinner with a single woman and her three young kids. 
She lived in a very, very small studio apartment, stuffed with two twin beds and a small kitchen table. She was originally from Guatemala. When she moved to the States, she moved into this building to get her and her kids off the streets. It was an ancient building. It was big, had like six floors, and was in constant need of maintenance. The elevators never worked, so you always had to take the stairs. And then, there were the roaches, everywhere. Half of the apartments were vacant, including the apartment directly next to hers, and also the one directly above hers. I remember we were getting ready to leave and head back home for the night when she closed the door, stepped outside of the apartment, and told us that she needed our help. She started to talk to us about these noises she was hearing in the apartments next to and above her. She said that there was nobody living in those apartments, but recently she had heard voices through her walls from the apartment next to her, and they were asking for her kids by name. She went and knocked on the door, but obviously nobody answered since nobody was living there. But she heard laughing and little footsteps like someone was running around in there. On another occasion, she said that she heard tapping on the ceiling. She thought it was nothing until the tapping became more like pounding and got louder and louder. She said that she felt very afraid and told us that she felt like a very negative and scary feeling was coming from there. She hit the ceiling with a broom handle but it just got louder and louder and went on for a couple of minutes and then just stopped. You could see it in her face that she was terrified and worried, especially since whatever it was knew her kids' names. We spoke with her a little longer, then said a special prayer with her to bless her house, and then we left. I don't really remember much of that bike ride home. I just remember I was thinking about the previous two days and the weird stories that these people were telling me. As we were getting ready for bed, I remember my companion closed the gigantic mirror closet doors when I was heading to the bathroom to brush my teeth. At this point, I was super tired. I even think I fell asleep first that night, which was a rare occurrence. But without fail, 2am arrives and my eyes open. I was so sleepy, which is different than when I usually wake up in the middle of the night. Most of the time I wake up, I'm almost wide awake. So this time was like something woke me up. And I was freezing again. I was rolled over on my side facing the wall and tried to close my eyes to sleep again when heard a faint squeaking noise. It went for a second and then stopped, like whatever it was realized that it was making a noise, then waited for a minute to make sure it didn't wake anyone up, then kept going. It sounded like somebody was wheeling something across a floor or opening a window. I rolled over slowly after the noise stopped, expecting to see my companion at his dresser grabbing something or coming in from the bathroom, but... He was still sound asleep, facing the other wall. I stared at him for a second, then rolled back over and stopped mid-roll as I noticed the closet door was open about a foot. I stared at the big mirror door for a good 15 seconds, trying to remember if he had closed the door before we went to bed, and I was sure that he did. I figured that he had gotten up or opened it after I fell asleep and I managed to close my eyes and get some more sleep. During the breakfast the next morning, my companion came into the kitchen and asked me if I had opened the closet door during the night. I told him no and that I thought he was the one that opened it. He looked at me kind of weird, almost like he was trying to figure out if I was messing with him or not. I didn't really think much of it either and for some reason didn't tell him anything about the weird noise I had heard. So, anyway... We went and met up with another set of missionaries that were in a nearby area because that day we were going on what we called splits. Splits are basically when you trade companions for about 24 hours. You either stay in your area and work with a missionary from another area, or you go to the other missionary's area and work there with his companion, and then you switch back the following day. I was assigned to stay in our area and work with a missionary that I had worked with before, so I was pretty excited about it since we were buddies. Come dinner time, we met a lady from our congregation at her house for some homemade burritos. We got there and she gave us our food, and then she told us about a friend she had that lived across town who was a widow. 
She told us that her friend was having a really hard time being in her house alone because there were spirits that were tormenting her. She told us that the woman lives in this big house by herself and hasn't slept in over a week because when she sleeps, these spirits try to attack her. She said that the woman has had things thrown at her, she's been scratched and had her hair pulled, and she's had all sorts of other stuff that has been going on and that she couldn't afford to move or go somewhere else. After dinner, we got back to the apartment and got ready for bed. I know this is going to sound weird, but I remember that whole time that I was getting ready. I felt like there were other people in our apartment other than the two of us. I didn't tell my new companion anything about the stories from the previous two days, nor did I tell him about the noise I heard the night before and my other companion's question about our closet doors. And he didn't seem to notice anything weird about our apartment, or at least he didn't say anything. And so, I just hopped into bed. I remember that night, I personally made sure that the closet doors were all the way shut. At 2.45am, I woke up and checked my alarm clock. Sometimes I wake up just to roll over and I can fall back asleep pretty quickly if I'm lucky. I remember as I rolled over, I thought I saw that the closet door was open about a foot again. But I ended up just falling back to sleep. At 3.30am, I opened my eyes and stared at my alarm clock. I remember I was on my side facing the wall and it was freezing cold again. I remember this time when I woke up, I was wide awake. I wasn't groggy and not that weird half asleep thing where it's hard to open your eyes. I was completely awake and alert. I remember feeling immediately on edge like someone was watching me, just waiting for me to move. I remember feeling the hair on my body stand on end, and it was completely silent. I sat there motionless for a good 10 minutes, waiting for the feeling to go away, but it didn't. It just kept getting more and more intense. I was still lying on my side, and then I started to feel what felt like really cold fingers slide under my comforter by my neck. They grabbed my blanket and I could feel the knuckles of the fingers on my neck and shoulder as they started to pull my covers down off of my body. Slowly, my comforter was going down from my neck to my shoulders to my elbow and then to my waist. And then, in one big tug, they were thrown down past my knees and off of the foot of my bed. I was frozen and had closed my eyes at this point. I couldn't talk. I couldn't yell to my companion for help. Nothing. I sat there for what felt like forever. And just kept getting this feeling of like a little gust of air across my body. Almost like someone or something was breathing on me. Every now and then it felt like it would lightly scratch me or slightly run its finger along my arm. Eventually, it stopped. And I told myself that on the count of three, I was going to turn over and look. I turned over and looked all around the room. But there was nothing. And was completely silent. My companion was sound asleep facing the other wall and his covers were totally fine. He looked untouched and clearly hadn't been awake since we went to bed. I did notice, however, that the closet door was open about three feet now. Not all the way open, but more than it was before, definitely. Without a doubt, whatever had been coming into my room at night was coming from there. That feeling that someone was watching me never went away. I never told my original companion what had happened, and weirdly enough, once he came back, nothing happened again. Honestly, I don't know why I never told him what happened, and I don't know if I ever will. Since I've returned from our missionary service, I've had other experiences as well. If there are any other people that have had experiences while serving on mission... I sure would love to hear about them.